Joining us now is Bob Iacchino, founder and chief market strategist at Path Trading Partners. Bob, it's always good to see you. We see the markets responding positively today. What do you think is behind this? The expectation that perhaps these tariffs actually were going to go into effect? No, I think it's just the idea that that's been taken off the table. One of the things that worries me about this whole situation, and this has been said ad nauseum, but I'm going to say it again, is using sort of an economic tool uh, that's painting it in the best light possible to solve a non-economic problem is, it, it's just a practice that I, I feel very, very uncomfortable with. And the fact that this uh, behavior has been rewarded and is being rewarded by the market. If you look at the way the market performed last year, uh, we all know it was one of the best uh, or the best week of 2019. I think it was more in anticipation that this wouldn't happen, that the levies, the, the tariffs were not going to be levied in any way, shape or form. The Mexican government was very responsible in responding quickly, bringing negotiators to the table. I don't think it was ever a case of it. But then you saw the quick turnaround with the Chinese situation where we went from optimism to pessimism extremely quickly and to no negotiations being planned. I think there was always a chance that the market was wrong about it. And that's what I think this little extra kick is. If we actually thought the tariffs were going to be put in place, we'd be up 500 today. We would not have been up last week. Well, well, let's talk China a little bit, Bob, because uh, President Trump calling into CNBC earlier this morning, giving a wide ranging interview where they covered, among other things, tariffs. The president saying this morning, quote, the China deal is going to work out. You know why? Because of tariffs, because right now China is getting absolutely decimated by countries that are leaving China by com Well, he said countries, but I think he meant companies that are leaving China, going to other countries, including our own. Uh, how, how do you make sense of, of, of that comment? Do you actually see any evidence of, of, of companies completely changing their supply chains or, or the other part of that question, moving forward that, that a deal will be reached with China because of these tariffs? Well, we do see some evidence of it, but it's, it's anecdotal and they're smaller companies. The smaller companies can be more nimble. Uh, that's a fact in any sort of uh, economic or business situation. Companies like GoPro are doing uh, are making moves to avoid these tariffs, but that's a tiny, tiny company in terms of the overall capitalization of the market. So, you know, again, the problem with this from my perspective, and I'm going to try to say this as non-politically as I possibly can, because I don't look at these things politically at all. I look at that simply from a market structure standpoint. Yeah. This is getting worded for bad behavior. And, and this and, is what I don't like, the Mexican situation. And to your comment about, about GoPro, Bob, you're absolutely right. That company moving uh, US bound camera production to from China, but moving it to Mexico, not moving it to the United States. So sure. uh, an important sure. point there. And that, I, that, that's a great point, Tim and Chris. And that, that point actually plays into why the Mexican tariffs was going to be such a problem and was probably never actually going to be implicated or put in place, simply because that USMCA clears the space for companies to do that. It's an easier move. You know, it's interesting, though, for these tech companies, we're not talking about the biggest hardware companies out there like an Apple per se, but Samsung, Dell, Microsoft, Microsoft certainly would be in terms of hardware, um, reportedly meeting with Chinese officials last week uh, to talk about how China does not want them to ban the sale of their goods, of their technology to China, despite uh, encouragement by the Trump administration. I think if Samsung, for instance, gets 18% of its business from China. And so even though tariffs are the headlines that always seem to get the market, right, all of this other business that's not necessarily a tax on the goods is a threat as well in this. And so I wonder what disruption uh, you think that could potentially cause, Bob? Well, again, great point, Chris. And I was going to bring this part up. Just as you see the U.S. government making some small concessions for certain industries, they would probably make immediate concessions for rare earth, for example. Uh, you see the companies actually negotiating directly with China. The pressure to do this kind of activity on the president and his administration came from these companies. These companies who agreed to kind of open the hood and show their technology, but never agreed to get their technology stolen or copied. If they actually negotiate directly with the Chinese government, the power of these tariffs goes away very quickly. So that's kind of a problem for the administration and the, the sort of tack they've taken with the tariffs. You know, we all know that the tariffs are a tax on the U.S. consumer. But the president also has cover because when you look at the data, there is no inflation in the data. Whether there's inflation in very specific products, I'm not arguing that there's not. But this is the perfect time to take this incorrect path. 
because there is cover in the strong U.S. economy, which is slowing, and there is no wage growth, so there is no inflation. We're in a deflationary structural economy. The two of you can probably list out the last time that you bought something online without a coupon code. The entire economy is working out a structurally a structural deflationary tact. So to place these tariffs on the U.S. consumer right now is a time in history when it's going to be felt the least. So it's a problem if, for the administration, if the companies can actually make deals directly with the Chinese government. Bob, how, you know, we've had the, the benefit of uh, 72 hours since the, the latest jobs figures came out. Take us through how that economic data is making you think differently about the remainder of the year. A huge miss for the May jobs numbers, of course. Yeah, it's not at this point, Tim. And these are the kind of things where you, you're looking for a trend. I and mean, we are seeing the economic data in the U.S. trend weaker as well. We saw some uh, misses on some of the PMIs and the ISMs globally. Uh, the U.S. one came out in line after several months of beats. The uh, consumer confidence going forward is starting to look weaker. So this particular jobs number only bothered me in that the three lined up. And by the three, I mean Challenger Grand Christmas, um, the ADP payrolls and the non-farm payrolls, those don't always line up. Mm -hmm. And we always refer back to the non-farm payrolls. We saw wage growth again, but we saw it slip. 3.1% annually is not a horrible number, but it's sliding from what was expected, sliding from last month. And again, this particular thing gives a tiny bit of cover, but it'll be very short-lived. Mm -hmm. So we look for trends in these things, just like we look at in the commodities. This was not a good number for the economy, but if it's a one-off, then it's not a problem at all. Bob, we've got a merger Monday on our hands. Two massive deals. Yes. Salesforce buying Tableau for about $15 billion, and then Raytheon and United Technologies merging in what's going to become the second biggest competitor in this aerospace defense unit just behind Boeing. Interestingly, both of these deals, all stock deals, given what we know about the market right now, is the all stock deal the way to go? Uh, given when you're, okay, so you're looking at Raytheon and U UTX are looked at as sort of a merger of equals, whereas Salesforce and Tableau are not. But Tableau, again, Salesforce has been making acquisitions in the data space. Their last two acquisitions have been all about data. And they could be preparing themselves to compete with perhaps a scaled down Facebook and Google in areas they don't currently compete in, building another behemoth. This Raytheon UTX deal to me is extremely interesting because it forms more a company where you have a two-sided balance sheet similar to Boeing, where you're looking at the commercial side, the, the defense side, possibly propping each other up. You don't always see these mergers and these acquisitions uh, where you see both stocks higher. Uh, you look at UTX last week was up almost $8. Raytheon was up almost $11. Um, those are big moves the prior week. Uh, Brings a little bit of suspicion as to the the talk of the street being able to trade on an insider basis, but that's a whole other conversation. I like the UTX Raytheon deal much more than the Salesforce deal. I think the Salesforce deal will hit uh, Salesforce's stock a little bit more. All right, we're gonna have to leave it there. Bob Iacchino is the founder and chief market strategist at Path Trading Partners. Bob, it's always great to see you. Thanks for joining us in Cheddar Business today. Good to be here, guys. Thank you.